Okay, so um, welcome everyone, and uh, thank you for joining the session on uh, Tidal Streams. Um, so today's session, we will be uh, talking about uh, tidal information, where to get information on tides. We'll be looking at um, tidal diamonds, uh, tidal atlases. We're going to talk about the tidal hour. And also, we're going to look at how to calculate the tidal rates and sets. And at the end, there will be a short Kahoot fun quiz. So the uh, objectives of the, um, of the session is um, we're going to look at the Alunac. We're going to talk again about the uh, box of facts for standard ports. Uh, we're going to look at how to find high and low water times, a bit like we did last week. Uh, we're going to talk about spring and neeps and red and blue days, uh, universal time, daylight saving, finding out to calculate the right high water hour. And then we're going to find the tidal rates and set using tidal diamonds, which we find on the chart, and then um, and tidal stream addresses now. OK, so why are uh, tidal uh, streams and finding out information about tidal streams so important? If we are out sailing and we had a fix, then we need the tidal information to calculate our estimated position. Um, we also need it if we are somewhere and we want to go somewhere and there's a tide, then we need to calculate our course to steer. And again, for passage planning, it's uh, very, very important. Like if we want to go around the headland, we need to make sure that we arrive at the right time um, at the headland. So the only way we can find out about that is to check the almanacs and also go into the title addresses. So where do we get the information from? We get the information from the almanac. Uh, the almanac, uh, we have here the uh, training almanac, uh, our training almanac. And um, what is important when you use uh, an almanac is, A, you have to check the standard port, which port you're looking at. You have to check at the time zones, UT, universal time. And if you have to add any uh, hours for daylight saving, and then you need to find out information about if it's springs and needs. The, uh, in real life, the almanac that is the Bible of, uh, uh, for sailors is the Reeds Nautical Almanac. It covers uh, all the way from Gibraltar, tidal information all the way from Gibraltar, all the way up to the tip of Denmark, and then of course the British Isles and Ireland. Um, Tidal streams, we also need to find information about the tidal streams. Uh, we can find that also on the charts. There's something called tidal diamonds. And again, the tidal diamonds on each chart is again referring to a standard port. In this case here, you have uh, Plymouth. Or you can have tidal atlases, and the tidal atlases will also be referring to a standard port. Uh, in the almanac, we can also uh, apart from the tidal information for each of the uh, marinas. Uh, this is from uh, Northern Ireland where we were last summer. We went to Bale Castle, uh, where Bale Castle, which is also where the giant causeway is. Um, you can read information about the marina. And uh, because uh, for this marina, Saga was um, is 14, uh, 14 and a half meters. So we are too big to go into the marina. So we had to stay outside here on the, uh, on the pontoon outside the uh, roll on roll, roll off areas. So Almanac is the Bible and you need to uh, study that very, very carefully before you go anywhere. Now, what information do we need? So I made a little uh, checklist for you here. Um, we need to look at the uh, standard ports. Now, it, this is again from the training Almanac. So standard ports, there's many standard ports. We have, like here we have call with a standard port. Port Fraser is a standard port, Namli is a standard port, and Victoria is a standard port. But what is very important is we need to find out what is the standard port that this title uh, chart is, uh, Atlas is referring to. And it's mentioned on the top. So this one here is referring to high water Victoria. Yeah? It's very, very important that you don't make that mistake of using, like if you want to go into Namli, that you start using high water Namli 
for the tidal vectors. It will not work. You must use high water Victoria. So high water Victoria, the time zone, springs and neeps, and the dates. Apart from the high water times, we also need the tidal curve. Uh, we all looked at that last week. We don't need the tidal curve because we're for the calculating the height of the tide, but we need to look at what we call the range down here. So we have the range, uh, and the range is the range is spring range is 4.9 and 2.4. This will be be more clear later when we talk about uh, mid mid range. Now. Then, um, so find tidal information. Again, most important is that you do your box of facts. So let's say we want to go on the um, mm -hmm. March of 1st in the morning. So we find the date there. We can either, with the pencil, you can make a line on there, or I like to take it out and copy everything down in my notebook with my box of facts. So what time is a low water? and the time zone UT and the height of the tide 0.3, high water 11.39, UT 6.2. And now we have to calculate the range. The range is the difference between high and low water. So in this case, the range is 5.9 and that means it's a spring tide. It's also red here and you can see here spring. Okay, so let's have a look at a, an example on the 1st of March. Let's say we are here and the time is 13.09 UT and we want to go past Robertson Rock down here and we will be down there 14.09 which is approximately it will take us one hour to get down there. So we need to find information about the tides in this area so if you look at the chart here, you can see that we have a diamond here, F, tidal diamond F. So let's have a look at what that is. So tidal diamond F refers to a chart, which is an, uh, sorry, a table, which are on the top of the chart. And there you will find this table here. It looks quite daunting when you see it at first, but it's actually straightforward. So at the top, we have the position of the diamond. So this is the coordinates for this position here. Over here, we have high water and these are the hours before high water. So this is three hours before. Down here, it's one hour after high water, two hours after high water. The next column is the direction of the tide. So this one here is 96, 0, 96 degrees true. And the last column, here, for example, here we have 2.9, which is the tidal uh, stream at springs and 0.15 at neeps. The same information we can find on the tidal atlas. So here I've taken a copy of the tidal atlas uh, four hours after high water. And Robertson is somewhere around here. So let's just look at the tidal atlas a little bit first. So if the arrows are thick, that means the tide is very, very strong. And if the arrows are thin, then there is less strong tide. So it says 18 full stop 36. So what that means is where the full stop is, is where the tidal stream is uh, measured, so to speak, or in that area, that's also the area, uh, a location of tidal diamond F. So 18 means 1.8 knots at neeps and 3.6 at springs. So let's see if it tallies with the tidal diamond. So I'll bring up the tidal diamond here and we had four hours after high water. So I go to four hours after high water down here and you can see it tallies 3.6 at springs and 1.8 in leaps. So you can find the same information both ways. I 
personally prefer the title stream atlas because it's much easier to see what the tide is doing and you can easily flip through the um, the title atlas to see what's happening how the tide, tide will develop as the time goes by, uh, goes on okay so let's get back to the title uh, title flow so we have something called the title hour so when you look in the title stream atlas this picture here we say that that is valid for one hour what does that mean that means that if high water victoria is 12 o'clock then we assume that we have this picture of these tides for one hour that means oh sorry 30 minutes before high water and 30 minutes after so from 11 30 to 12 30 we have this picture here of tides that we use so if you're traveling if you're sailing within night that one hour then we have to use these tides to use any calculations or corrections on our position so two hours uh, after high water same thing it's down here so you can see how it's not at two o'clock it's from 1 30 to 14 uh, 30 that this this charge here is valid this title charge is valid and the same thing here if we're looking at high water high water plus four hours then these numbers here in the tidal diamond is also valid from this hour here so that's how you have to calculate you have to look you have to do this title ladder you can do that on a piece of paper it doesn't have to be as beautiful as this one i normally just do a small sketch in the, in the logbook or in the notebook and then uh, make sure i don't make the mistake of um, skipping one hour because if you get the tides wrong and you go into the wrong title atlas and you can get a situation where you have a wind over tide or so on. So let's get back to our our title uh, atlas here. Yeah? So, uh, sorry, not title atlas, our journey. So we were here at 13.09 and we're going to travel down here to 14.09. So now I would like you to have a think about which uh, title hour we will be traveling in. I'm going to bring up a poll for you to enter in. So, so high water is 11.39 and we are sailing between 13.09 and 14.09. Which title hour do we need to use? A few more. Okay. So let me share the results. So majority of the um, of the people are saying high water plus two hours, which is correct. Let me get. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. So high water plus two hours is the um, is where we are going to travel, and that means we will be using the tidal atlas for high water plus two hours. A lot of people sometimes they look at where we are ending up, 14.09, and then they go to 14.09, and then they use high water three. But the correct uh, one to use is high water two. So don't make this mistake. Okay. So two hours after high water. Let's have a look. We can either use the Tidal Diamond or the uh, Tidal Atlas. Here we have the information. So 0 uh, 0.9 NEEPS and 1.7 SPRING. We have SPRING, so it's 1.7. Same information we can find over here, 1.7. We have the direction here, which is 282, which is nearly 
a little bit more than west. So if you look down here, you can also measure the uh, with your plotter here and get 282 on this one here. So tidal stream at high water plus two is two, uh, 282 degrees true and 1.7 uh, knots of uh, tide. So that number you will then use to do your course to steer um, and then uh, find out uh, how to sail to get to the around the Robertson Rock. Uh, one thing I want to mention here is uh, slack water means uh, when the tide is turning. So it's, if it says slack on the tidal uh, stream atlas, that means there's little or no uh, tide in that area. Okay, that was easy because uh, the numbers were there in the, in the tidal diamond and the tidal atlas. But when we have mid range, that means when we have a situation where we are neither at spring or at NEEPS, then it takes a little bit more to find the uh, tidal stream. So again, you look, we are at 18. We want to travel on the 18th of March. You do again your box of facts. Up, and then you calculate, you write everything down. Don't forget to put the, uh, the time zones so you don't make any mistakes. Then you calculate the range, the range is 4.2. That means if we look here at the, this is from the uh, tidal curve. So 4.9 is spring, we are less than 4.9. That means we are mid range. Now it gets interesting. So we have uh, also in the uh, almanac, you will find this one here just uh, after the uh, tidal stream atlases uh, for Victoria. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is, we go in, uh, hang on, sorry, was it uh, high water? Yes. All right, so in order to calculate in this one, let's say we are down here and we are uh, high water plus two uh, two hours, then um, so 1.7 and 0 0.9 are the NEEPs and springs. So we start with the NEEPs, which is 0 0.9. So you have down on this line down here, we have one and then we go in at 0 0.9. We go up to the NEEPs line, which is the blue one going across here. And then we make a nice red circle. When we've done that, we take the spring, which is 1.7, go up to the spring line, which is this red line, and we also make a nice uh, circle there. And then we connect those two lines with a big red line. So now we are ready. The next step we have to do is we go up, we calculated already that it was mid range and it was 4.2. This is the range scale, the, the y, X and this one is the range scale. So we go in and find 4.2, which is down here, there. And then we make a line across. And where that line touches the big red line, we draw a line down to the bottom. And there we can read what is the tide for the 18th of March at high water. So it's 1.5. Is there any questions for, for this one here? Or do you want me to go want to go through it again? Or this is very important that you are clear about this one. Is, is, this, good? is this chart found in the almanac? Yeah, so this, uh, this chart you will find in the almanac. Uh, it, it will be, um, so you will have the, uh, you will have the information on, uh, the, on the standard port. And there will also be the tidal stream atlases. And then this one will also be there. And it refers to, as you can see up here, it refers to Victoria. Yeah. So you, if you have a tidal stream atlas, then there will always be uh, a correspondent uh, uh, form like this that you can use to calculate the mid-range uh, mid tides. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. All right, then let's continue. So uh, I'm not going to talk too much about uh, patch planning, but I'm just going to mention a little bit about it. Uh, so let's say that we are on uh, March the 18th around lunchtime. We had a bit of a lie-in and we are up here in Port uh, Rampton. And we are planning to sail south. So we need to know what time we can uh, go south. And we, of course, we want to have the tide with us because that would make life easier for us. So we do the box of facts, which we have already done or before. So we get into the tide table, uh, high water Victoria, because that's what uh, the tide uh, atlases are based on. Box, uh, box of facts. And then we have high water at 1245. Then, we bring out the tidal atlas. So let's say what it looks like at around. So this is high water Victoria. We have the port here, Port Rapton is here. And you can see the tides are going against us. So if we were leaving at high water, then we would have the tide, uh, high water time, then we would have the tide against us. So let's bring out the next, uh, the next ones. So I bring out the two next ones. So one hour after Victoria, here you can see that the tide has already uh, changed. It's going down, so that looks good for us. And especially, let's just check the next one as well. The tide is still going down, so it's also good. And also here now you can see the tide down here has changed and goes towards the west. Here it was going towards the east. So if we were planning to leave uh, Port Rampton and then going west, then we would plan to be down here about two hours after high water. So we'll make sure we get this tide with us also. So the time to leave uh, Port um, Rampton would be one hour after high water. So quiz time. So one hour after high water, that means what time can we leave? So now you have to think about again, what time is high water and then one hour after high water. Yeah, so high water is 12.45. That means that half an hour on either side of that is the tidal hour for the high water. And we were planning to leave high water plus one. So that means the high water plus one tides, they start at 1.15. Are we all happy with that? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Aiden, you have any questions or just uh, yeah. clearing your phone? No, it's coming back. It's very rusty. <laughs> <laughs> very rusty. You need, a, you need something to lubricate with, huh? Absolutely. It's just right here. <laughs> yeah. So again, when you do uh, this kind of uh, planning, uh, just draw up this uh, title ladder on your on a piece of paper and then you'll not make any of mistakes of getting the uh, the hours wrong. Yeah, it's really, really important, yeah? Box of facts, do the title uh, ladder and find out which uh, title hour that you need to use for, for your passage or for your journey. Okay, uh, so that brings me to the end of the presentation or the session. Um, so objectives, we looked at uh, where to find information for standard ports. Don't forget the uh, box of uh, facts. Yeah. We looked at spring and meeps, the red and blue days. We looked at uh, universal times and day saving times. So don't forget when you copy something from the almanac, always put down the time zone so you don't make any mistakes on the other time. So it's, it's get more important uh, also when you are sailing to uh, across the channel then you have a, an additional um, uh, headache of uh, the time zone or European time. We looked at and uh, calculated the uh, right title hour. So don't forget that the title addresses are valid half an hour before and half an hour after the time that they're showing. We looked at finding the title rate and the set using both title diamonds and the title stream at last. So, yeah. Do you know your plans yet after you uh, reach the Caribbean? Uh, yeah. Uh, 
So uh, we'll come over, we'll arrive at Barbados, and we'll do uh, a session of uh, sail and diving uh, trips, mm -hmm. uh, a bit, uh, bit relaxing, a bit uh, different from what we are doing now uh, for a few, for two months. And then uh, we'll sail from uh, Antigua to uh, Bermuda, and then from Bermuda we sail up to uh, uh, Nova Scotia. Wow. And uh, yeah, we're going to explore that. Uh, Newfoundland, and then we come back uh, across the Atlantic uh, into July, uh, back to the Azores, and then back up to the UK, uh, end of uh, 22. Yes, and then 20, 2023 will be uh, going up to Norway and um, uh, Iceland and Fairy Islands again. So that's the plan. Yeah. Everybody has any questions and bye bye and uh, have a good weekend and uh, don't forget the title hour <laughs> and box of facts. Thank you. Thanks very yeah. much. Well, Thank you. Yeah. Bye -bye. Yeah. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. All right. Thank you.